Welcome to part three of this tutorial showing you how to respond to the work of Dennis Sheckler. And we will now be opening up um, an image to put into our background. So I've just got basic sky and I'm going to mask it off, control C, control V, and then I'm going to resize it because it's basic sky. I am going to allow myself a bit of a stretch because it's not exactly stretching any subject matter. And then I'm going to move that layer down behind everything else. Okay. Um, I think that layer needs to be a little bit more bright. So I'm going to go image adjustments and human saturation. And I'm going to up the saturation and make it a little bit darker. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Actually, while I'm here, I'm going to do the same to um, my model, my daughter. Uh, image adjustments, hue saturation. I find upping the saturation a bit and making it a bit darker adds to that kind of collage effect. Um, it makes the elements feel a little bit more like they've come from a glossy magazine. Right, okay. Now we're going to add um, some lightning. And I'm going to use the magic wand tool, make sure the tolerance is up quite high. Click on just the lightning and you'll see it selects most of the lightning. Control C, Control V. And my lightning is there for me to place. It's just going to spin it so I've got it coming from off shot onto her finger. That's my plan. Okay. Don't want it to go over her head, so. There we go. Okay. Right now, you can't really see it. We need to make it look a bit more um, exciting. So we're going to double click on the layer and we go to outer glow. And you'll notice that I've chosen this nice dark blue and I've made sure that it's normal blend mode and I've adjusted these so I'm happy with the amount of glow that I have. Click OK and there's your lightning. Now, obviously if this was a darker background you could have um, a lighter glow around your lightning. Right, next up we're going to put some clouds in and I have um, searched for, I've Google searched for clouds PNG. So I've got a PNG file, which means that I've got this empty background rather than having to kind of polygonal mask around a cloud. I have these clouds that already have the background gone for me, which is um, really useful. Okay, I'm going to place one down here. And I don't want to, it to look quite so solid. So I'm going to go to the layer and I'm going to choose soft light and hard light, I think. Yep, hard light's working for me, I think. I'll just try some other things out. Yep. And then I'm going to duplicate that layer. So I've got another cloud. I'm going to move it over here, I think. Stretch it out a little bit. Bit of a sneaky stretch. Okay, place that. And you'll notice that I got two clouds. So I'm going to grab my other cloud. So it doesn't look like I've got the same cloud repeated over and over and over again. Paste this in. Control C, Control V, as always. Shrink it down. Put it up here, I think. I need to put it below my lightning. So I'll bring the layer down and the same again, I'm going to choose something that makes it look more realistic. Duplicate the layer and put another one up here. That's nice. Okay. And now I have one more thing that I want to do. Okay, 
And that is to add, I'll show you Dennis Sheckler's work, these kind of weird waves that kind of emanate from the centre of his pictures. So I want to show you how you can produce a similar effect. So if I go to File Open, I've already saved some concentric circles, PNG, so I've got a clear background, so I've just got the circles, and I'm going to Control c Control v to cut and paste that in. Good idea to bring the layer to the top rather than have it hidden down the bottom. So I'll bring it up. Okay, and you can see it there. So now I'm going to make it nice and big. And I'm going to go to Edit, Transform, and Warp. And this is going to allow me to warp the image it's by pulling on the edges and moving these handles to make it warp. Let me just um, zoom out and then I can grab these handles and make them go a long way off. Okay, and you can warp this as much as you like. Um, one good thing about this is you can um, press the arrow tool to stop the warp and then warp it some more if you wanted. But I'm happy with this, so I'm going to move this up to the top half of the image. And I'm going to duplicate this layer, I think, because I want to have more going on. Um, but I think it's always quite nice to have several kind of center points kind of emanating. Makes it look a little bit more exciting. And then duplicate the layer again, he thinks, to fill in this bottom right hand corner. There we go. Okay. Just move it to exactly where I want it to be. And then I'm going to select all three of those and I'm going to merge them together so they are one layer now. And then, as I often do, I'm going to go to the little drop down menu above. Just make sure I've masked, uh, taken it off the mask. I'm going to choose a particular. There we go, soft light, I think, for this one. Yep. And it's still a little bit hard, so I'm going to bring the opacity down so you can't see it as much. So it's more like Dennis Sheckler's work. And that is our finished piece of work. Thank you for joining me for this tutorial. I hope it helps.